In a battle of three and one teams in conference, Boston University hosted Colgate on Thursday night at the roof. Baskets were hard to come by early on, but Max Mahoney made it look easy at times in the paint. He finished with eight first half points. In deep, swivels in on Raymond and scores. That'll help, that's another high percentage shot. The offense got going as BU was able to extend the lead to nine with threes by Will Goff and Cedric Hankerson. Oh, and Goff has a wide open look for three. You don't have to say much when Will Goff has an open look. You saw in the game against Lehigh, he can get, he can get going in a hurry. Scanlon with a great kickout pass, cross court to Cedric Hankerson for his first points of the night. Colgate freshman Jordan Burns kept Colgate in the game in the first half, hitting three from beyond the arc as he finished with 11 in the first 20 minutes. The Terriers went into the half up 31 to 24. In the second half, Javante McCoy getting accustomed to off-balance shots. He puts in this acrobatic layup for two of his 10 points. Time to shoot. How about the scoop shot for Javante McCoy atoning for the two missed free throws? Colgate could not buy a bucket as they shot just two for 18 from three-point range in the second half and shot just 29.5% from the field for the game. Tyler Scanlon continues to do whatever is asked of him. He scored 11 of his 13 points in the second half and recorded his third double-double in four games. You expect to hit a few more. Oh, there's a great shot by Scanlon, and if he hits the free throw, he'll have his double-double. The Terriers went on to beat the Raiders 72-58. to BU moves to 4-1 in conference play and are undefeated at home in Patriot League action. BU will head to Worcester on Sunday to take on the Holy Cross Crusaders. Pre-game begins at 12.45 p.m. on the Terrier Sports Radio Network. The Terriers remain atop the Patriot League play as they beat Colgate 72-58 and prove to 4-1 in the conference. Joined alongside Tyler Scanlon, three double-doubles in your last four games and the second game in a row that it's been a second-half point surge for you. You've been asked to do a lot of things. What did you see in the second half that you had to pick up your scoring? I don't think it had anything to do with me picking up my scoring personally. It's just the offense that we were running flowed that way. Uh, the first half of this game and the last game, we had other guys making plays. And that's kind of how it is. You know, certain guys step up. We got a young team. The same guy can't get it done every night, every possession. Uh, everybody fills in when they can. Tyler, congrats on the win. We'll see you Sunday. Thank you. We'll move over to your, the assistant coach, Walt Corbin. And, you know, we just heard Tyler talking about the way the offense flows. Uh, you guys have asked a lot out of him. What have you seen from game to game in his own personal growth? Well, he's really taken a step up as far as a maturity level. I mean, I know, you know, year to year you see growth, but I can't even imagine or can't even begin to tell you the, the, the how big it's been in a short period of time. I mean, he brings so much to the table on both ends of the floor. He's such a cerebral player. Is it safe to say you wouldn't call this necessarily the prettiest game overall, but this was one of those grinded out games that you know you're going to have in conference and your team made the winning plays, especially on the defensive end, to stop Colgate from the three-point line? Well, absolutely. I mean, every game can't be like, you know, the Lehigh game. <laughs> and we struggled early on, um, you know, just with the offensive flow. Uh, but Coach really did a great job at halftime going in there and calming them down and saying, we just need to continue to do what we're doing. We'll make those shots. Don't go away from what our philosophy is. There was always the concern, like you saw in the Lehigh game, that Colgate was going to kind of get going from the three-point line in the second half. They continued to shoot him. What did your team do to really stymie any chances of that and any chances of run late on? You know, I, I'm, not, I'm not necessarily sure it's something that we made an adjustment with. I think we were just, from start to finish, pretty aggressive. Um, they do a really good job of cutting through the zone, playing through the middle. Uh, we communicated extremely well tonight, and with that being said and us being so aggressive, we were able to at least get a hand up on their shooters. Halfway through the first run of Patriot League play now as the Terriers will head to Worcester to take on Holy Cross on Sunday. Uh, certainly you know a lot about this Holy Cross team and, and what they like to like to do. What have you seen from your own team and the success they've had early on in Patriot League play? Well, I can tell you this. I mean, we didn't do a very good job of taking care of the basketball against the 1-3-1. One, one. We're going to see a lot of 1-3-1 one, one on Sunday, so we need to spend the next couple of days preparing for that. Coach, we'll see you in Worcester on Sunday. Thank you. That's assistant coach Walt Corbin as the Terriers improved to 4-1 and one in Patriot League play.